Truly may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all this evening. Our call to worship comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26. He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. be seated and let us pray. Almighty God, graciously behold us, your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was content to be betrayed and given up into the hands of his enemies to suffer death upon the cross for us and for our salvation. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and have promised to those who are penitent the forgiveness of their sins. Create in us new and contrite hearts that acknowledging our unworthiness, we may be truly sorry for our sin and receive from you the God of all mercy, pardon and peace. O Savior of the world, who by your cross and precious blood has redeemed us. Save us and help us. We humbly beseech you, O Lord. Gracious and loving God, the creator of the end of the earth, who gives power to the faint and renews the strength of those who wait upon you, look in compassion on us who trust in your mercy. As we remember how our Savior sought strength in your presence, for the trial of his faith, give us, we pray, like faith to wait upon you, that we may find courage and strength for the living of our days, 
through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear now God's word as it comes to us from John chapter 13. Jesus washes the disciples' feet. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know how, what, now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet and put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. The New Commandment. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. And by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Truly may the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Monday, Thursday, to which this text is annually assigned, draws this name from Christ's concluding pronouncement. I give you a new commandment, a mandatum novum in Vulgate Latin. And that mandatum novum is that you love one another. So the church gave this day its name from the word mandate. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one and other. Our text this evening begins with a meal. Jesus is at the table with his disciples, all of them most likely reclining, propped up on their elbows, dipping bread into bowls of food. There would be sounds of conversation filled and 
filling the room, punctuated from time to time by laughter or the clink of clay vessels one on another. A typical meal or conversation scene. Lamps would have flickered and their light reflecting in the eyes of the disciples. And while all of this is going on, Jesus gets up from the table, strips off his outer robe, wraps a towel around his waist, pours water into a basin, and then begins to wash his disciples' feet. Now, this would not have been unusual if he had been one of the household servants. The disciples probably had had their feet washed already just before the meal. But this is their teacher, their Lord. As he moves from one to another, presumably they fall silent until all you can hear is the splash of water being poured into the basin. Peter, and it would be Peter, objects, but Jesus persists. When it is over, Jesus puts his robe back on to join him at the table, and he says the following, do you know what I have done to you? Well, apparently not, because he has to go on to say the following, if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should do as I have done. This specific example of foot washing parallels the broader new commandment that we've just heard about, that novum mandatum, novum, that Jesus gives at the end of the reading in verse 34. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. His example of washing feet suggests that loving as he has loved means taking the role of a servant, caring for the needs of others without expecting anything in return. It also suggests that we are to do this not only for those who treat us well, but also for those who may disappoint us, hurt us, and even betray us. Because remember, Judas was there. Jesus washed his feet before he left. But can Jesus really expect us to do this, to love and to serve those who fail us or who betray us or who hurt us on purpose? Surely there are circumstances, reasons, exceptions to this love commandment. Author Elizabeth Johnson explains that Jesus' commandment to love one another, and I quote, is not a commandment to feel affection. It's not about feeling, but a commandment to act in a loving way. It's a volition. It's a commandment to act in a loving way, even when we would rather do otherwise. End of quote. And that practice of foot washing is actually very good. It illustrates this. Movement by movement, Jesus carefully prepares and then washes his disciples' feet. The practice of love that Jesus then calls us to is a very careful one. It is one of precision. It is one that requires time to demonstrate the depth of our love for one another. This type of love endures because of discipline. It takes real commitment. It takes practice. And Jesus says that this is what we should be known for, to be known for something that takes time, for something that takes practice, for something that becomes a public witness. This love then is bold it is courageous, but it is also purposeful, practiced, and thoughtful. It's also something else. It's a very difficult form 
of love. I want to illustrate that by way of a story. In May of 2008, Christiane Anandpour, who is a journalist for CNN, interviewed a woman in Rwanda called, if I could pronounce her name correctly, Iphigenia for CNN. And I believe Iphigenia's story displays this type of love. She was from the Tutsi ethnic group in Rwanda, and during the Rwanda genocide of 1994, her husband and five children were murdered, killed by a mob of Houthis. And one of her neighbors was in that mob. That neighbor who had participated in that massacre spent seven years in prison and then went before a reconciliation court where he asked for forgiveness from Iphigenia and the whole community. She would forgive him, but that's not the end of the story. Iphigenia was an expert weaver and she taught her neighbor's wife how to weave baskets. The two of them became friends and also business partners. On the day that Christiane Anandpour interviewed Iphigenia, she had invited these same neighbors into her home and was serving them dinner. It's unbelievable, but she was serving dinner to the man who killed her husband and her children. And when asked how she found it in her heart to forgive him for what he had done to her and her family, she replied very simply, I am a Christian and I pray a lot. That CNN report adds, and you can read this for yourself, it adds that the pain was etched in the lines on her face and around her sad eyes when she said this. This is a type of love that is difficult, and it takes time. Iphigenia did not decide to forgive her neighbor the day after he murdered her husband and children. It took her four long and difficult years to do so, after which she purposely decided, and I quote, to open her heart and accept his pleas for forgiveness. This seems to be a type of love that takes tremendous thought, it takes courage, it takes commitment, it takes patience, and it takes endurance. It takes discipline. It takes practice. It takes self-sacrifice. And it takes faith. I agree with Johnson when she writes that when we are left to our own human resources, this kind of love and forgiveness would, of course, be inconceivable. It's inconceivable to even think that this type of reconciliation is possible. And it's only possible because of the one who Iphigenia had faith in. It's only possible because of the one that Iphigenia trusted. It's only possible because of the one that Iphigenia prayed to. And this is the same one who loves us fully and completely. This is the same one who loves us to the end, even to the cross, the tomb, and the back. And this is the one who commands us to do the same. May it be so because it is to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit that we give praise and glory this evening and indeed forevermore.
Brothers and sisters, this is the table of the Lord. Jesus welcomed imperfect people to the table. He broke bread with the lowly and the outcast, with disciples who would forsake him, with even the one who would betray him. We are welcome at his table not because we are worthy, but because we are loved and forgiven. Come, come to the table, not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Come because you love the Lord a little and would like to love him more. Come because the Lord loves you and gave himself for you. Let this bread and wine be for you the token and pledge of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit, all meant for you if you will receive them in humble faith. This is the table of the Lord. O oh, come, taste, and see that the Lord is good. be seated. Let us confess together what it is that we believe. Let us join together in saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ was instituted in this way. On the night of his arrest, when the Lord Jesus was sharing his last meal with his friends, he took the loaf, and after having given thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples. And he said to them, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in memory of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this in memory of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. As the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, so on this night we take these elements of bread and of wine and set them apart from all common uses to this holy use and mystery. And as he gave thanks and blessed, let us too draw near to God and offer to God our prayers and our thanksgivings. Let us pray. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is right to give you thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise. O Lord our God, creator and ruler of the universe, you bring forth bread from the earth and create the fruit of the vine. You made us in your image and freed us from the bonds of slavery. You claimed us as your people and made covenant to be our God. You fed us manna in the wilderness and brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey. When we forgot you and our faith was weak, you spoke through prophets, calling us to turn again to your ways. Therefore we praise you with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven. We worship and adore your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, Lord most high. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, whom you sent to deliver us from the bondage of death and slavery to sin. In humility, he descends from your heights to kneel in obedience to love's commands. As a servant, he came, washing his disciples' feet, feeding them with the living bread, loving them into new life. And in doing so, he invited us to serve one another without pride, to forgive one another as we have been forgiven, and to feast at his table as members of one household. He who is boundless takes on our bondage. He who is free takes on our place in death's prison. In the deserts of our wanderings, he sustains us, giving us his body as manna for our weariness. The cup of suffering which he drank has become for us the cup of salvation. In his death, he ransomed us from death's dominion. In his resurrection, he opened the way to eternal life. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine from the gifts you have given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving as a living and holy offering of ourselves that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Great is the mystery of our faith. Christ has died Christ is risen, 
and Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these, your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be for us the communion of the blood and the body of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. God, our provider who feeds us with the bread, may all who gather at your table receive a foretaste of the eternal banquet. Servant God, on this night, when Jesus washed his disciples' feet, may we follow this example of love and service. God, our companion, we pray for those who are unable to eat at the Lord's table or any other table, for those who betray and for those betrayed and for all innocent victims. O oh God of hope, we hold up to you all those in need, whether close at hand or yet far away. God of love, grant our prayer. Lead us, O oh God, by the power of your Spirit to live as love commands, bound to Christ, set free in Christ, as Jesus gave his life for ours, help us to live our lives for others with humility and persistent courage. Give us strength to serve you faithfully until the promised day of resurrection, when, with the redeemed of all the ages, we will feast with you at your table in glory. Through Christ, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Jesus Christ taught us, we humbly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake in the one bread. The bread that we break, is, not, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a sharing of the blood of Christ? These are the gifts of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us.
Let us pray. God of grace, your Son, Jesus Christ, left us his holy meal of bread and of wine, in which we share his body and blood. May we who have celebrated this sign of his great love show in our own lives the fruits of his redemption. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray, who lives and reigns with you, the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. first reading is from the book of St. Matthew, chapter 26, verses 30 through 35. Listen for God's word. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even if all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Amen. Here ends the first lesson.
second reading is from the book of St. Matthew, chapter 26, verses 36 through 41. Listen for God's word. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, my soul is deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, so could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Amen. Here ends the second lesson.
The third reading is from the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 47 through 50 and 56. Listen for the word of God. While he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. But all this has taken place so that the scripture of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled.
fourth reading is from the book of St. Matthew, chapter 26, verses 69 through 75. Listen for God's word. Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A female servant came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another female servant saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again he denied it with a note. I do not know this man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Amen. Here ends the fourth lesson. 